Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's podcast is actually going to be a new, fun, weekly format. We're going to geek out. We're going to do a roundtable of land geeks. So without further ado, let me start introducing to you our land geek panel. First off is... Facebook domination, David Banalas. David, how are you? Doing wonderful, Mark. Happy to be here. Awesome. Tell everybody your website. SimpleLifeLand.com. SimpleLifeLand.com. Rachel Mueller. Hello. The, the lone female voice. Rachel, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. What's your website? CanopyLandHoldings.com. CanopyLandHoldings.com. And you and Sean, that are our partners, are going to Europe. We are, yeah, just uh, four, four short weeks away. That's crazy. And how are you able to do that? How are you able to quit your job? Uh, because of you, because of this business. I mean, that's what's made this happen. We can take our business with us. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's, it's, the, best, it's, the, best, it's the best model out there. Yeah. Zen master, Mike Zeno. Hey, <laughs> what's up? Um, my, everybody's probably heard Mike before on the podcast and David. Um, Mike, uh, what's your website? Thelandguru.com. Thelandguru.com. Um, the youngest of our group. The man, the myth, the land investing legend, Tate Litchfield. Hey, everybody. How you doing today? So, Tate, what's, uh, what's been your favorite deal so far this, this week? Uh, you know, we had a couple really quick cash flips where we made uh, 250% on them. So, no major terms deals, but... Definitely got some good cash money coming in. All right. Team, team, team land geek, Eric Peterson. Eric Peterson is on the panel. Um, Eric, what's your website? My website is landopia.com. And Eric, how long have you been land investing? Well, I guess about two years now. Two years. Your first year, you had a goal to make 100 grand, right? Right. Did you do it? Part-time. Yes, I you did. did do it. Now you said, okay, I, you know, I know you went to boot camp. We're going to talk all about boot camp. You said, hey, look, I'm going to 10x it this year. Your first quarter, what have you done this year? 100K. 100K. And why were you able to make that leap from year one to year two? Um, well, I think a couple things. First of all, I, I did sign up for coaching at the beginning of this year. Um, secondly, you know, I, I was just determined to uh, continue to grow the business. Um, I have some some goals in mind for myself for this coming year and into next year. So, just working towards achieving those, and um, you know, signing up for coaching has definitely, you know, kind of lit a fire and, and helped me to uh, to be able to you know move towards those goals. I love it. I love it. And last but not least, you know him. You love him. Six Sigma, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And most importantly, you're not automating your Craigslist postings and Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash land geek. Scott, what do you think of this panel? I like it. I've been thinking about this for a while. The fact that we should uh, just talk some land, good old land investing, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's just start with... Um, land investing education because april 21st through the 23rd in vegas we've got boot camp coming up and everybody asks me like what's what's so great about boot camp right two and a half days of land investing immersion i always tell everybody you know once you leave boot camp all the land investing clouds dissipate and everything becomes super clear but you know that's coming from me like obviously i'm self-interested i want people to come to boot camp i'd love to hear it from the panel how many boot camps you've been to and what your biggest takeaways were from boot camp. So let's just start with David. Um, how many boot camps have you been to, David? I've been to two, Vegas in 2016 and San Antonio earlier this year. Um, each one has been amazing, but I go for the networking now. So each one has like one nugget that really stands out. So here they are, okay. So Vegas 2016, um, I'm a newbie. Tate Litchfield gets up there in, in, you know, in the front and frankly, he says, the reason why there's always land deals, he says, people are always going to die. 
<laughs> and the way he said it, it just so frank. And I was like, wow, okay, that's that's really it. People will die and properties will get passed on. So that, that was my the huge nugget from Vegas. <laughs> and then uh, most recently in San Antonio, um, it was one of the Whitebergs, I believe. Um, they gave me a little tip on closing uh, about, I, I, maybe I can give a tip here. Uh, just uh, the dock fee, you know, when someone's right on the fence, you know, just tell them you either waive the dock fee or reduce it with, you know, for the next 12 hours and you'll close the deal. So I used that and that's how I sold the property there at boot camp. So I can't wait for Vegas. You know, someone else is going to teach me something. I, I'm looking forward to it. That's awesome. Rachel Mueller, how many boot camps have you been to? Sean and I have been to two boot camps. Uh, the first is when we first started in 2015, I think, when we were in Orlando. And then most recently, we went to San Antonio at the beginning of this year. Okay. And what, what was like for you? Uh, at the beginning, I mean, we had barely even started our investor's toolkit. So just being immersed in that and meeting all these people that have experience and listening to Mike and his wife get up there and talk about how this has changed them and getting to meet people and seeing it actually work uh, was amazing. And then recently, uh, two years later, you know, we've made this happen for ourselves and being able to go back and kind of get a refresher course and meet new people and see how this is working for them was pretty amazing. But I think definitely our biggest takeaway was those awesome new breakout sessions and having all of these just super powerful minds all in one room being able to discuss things was really cool. That's really cool. That's really cool. And uh, Zen Master Mike Zeno. <laughs> what about you? How many how many boot camps have you been to now, Mike? You I'm trying to think. I don't know. Four or five. I, I'm, I've been to a lot of them. We love them every time. I'll tell you what I love is the network about the integration, especially um, the, the new trend where we have, you know, so many people coming that have already been established in the business and then so many people that are new in the business. And that integration, I think, is incredible because it just gives such a, a you know, even the people coming that are, we, we attract a lot of high level, high intelligence people, right? You know, they're not land investors, but they're people that, you know, they're top of their game and other, you know, other you know, avenues in life. And so that kind of interaction between everybody just brings a level of the room up, like you always say. And it just really is an incredible experience, you know, having that integration of people already doing the business, already down the road, a few years down, many years down, and then some people, brand new people first uh, getting into the business and the way everybody meshes together, it's pretty unique and it's pretty incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Rachel Mueller, what, what were you, th you thinking? You're kind of like shaking your head there. No, I'm agreeing. Oh, I'm, nodding. Okay. I'm nodding along. <laughs> Do yeah, I shake I, my head weird or shake it like this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. I mean, it, it's, always, it's always great to have that Boston accent in the room because it really, <laughs> it really provides a lot of flavor. And it, I get a lot of practice. Ma, go pack the car. And then, like, you know, Mike and Laura, yeah, they're like, you know, just quit. Okay. You're, you're worse than, like, you know, Matt Bat Damon in, uh, in, in uh, what was that movie? Oh, good old hunting. Yeah, good old hunting. Good old hunting. Yeah, <laughs> you're getting better. We'll I'm keep getting better. I'm, look, I'm gonna keep practicing. Tate Litchfield, uh, how many how many boot camps? You've been to like a lot. I was trying to remember. I think I've been to seven or eight of them at this point. I've been to a lot of them, um, and I guess uh, it had me thinking there, like why why do I keep coming back? I mean, there's only one that's in my backyard. The other ones are you know, in Scott's neck, so neck of the woods, but, you know, I'm going to go with David. And every time I go, I, I pick up some new, new little golden nugget that, that makes me, you know, a hundred thousand dollars at least. And the networking is phenomenal. The environment, it's nice to just go to a place and completely submerge yourself in the business for two or three days and make those friends and connections and, and people that you can lean on. So Boot camp's one of those things that I won't miss. It's just kind of become a daily part of my life and business. And every year I look forward to it. And if there was a monthly one, I'd be at them all. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Eric Peterson, what about you? How many have you been to now? Two. Um, so I went, I think, in 2015 in Orlando and then uh, last year in Orlando. And um, for me, I think 
uh, it's a couple things. One is obviously the connections, knowing people in the business is, it's so beneficial to, uh, to make those contacts and be able to just kind of keep up to date with what's going on with, you know, their business, your business, and kind of do that talk back and forth. And, um, and then beyond that, now I haven't been to one of the, the new boot camps with the uh, kind of segmented um, breakout groups where the advanced users go one place and the newbies somewhere else. But um, in the, the breakout sessions I have attended, um, you know, I just think working with all these creative minds and just the ideas that are kind of brought to the table, um, you can learn a lot from that. Yeah. Now, Eric, have you ever been to like a, another real estate seminar? No, not another real estate seminar. David, what about you? Have you ever been to another one? I almost went to one. I went almost, I registered for a rich dad uh, event. I just couldn't make it. Yeah. Rachel, what about you? Uh, I have a little real estate experience, but no, never been to a big seminar before. Yeah. Mike? No. No. Tate? No. No. All right. Scott, Todd, have you? Uh, yeah, I've been to a couple of them. How, how are we different? Uh, you know, I think that the difference is that uh, at Land Geek Boot Camp, basically you you get the material, right? Like there's no there's no high pressure sales or hey, you know, pay pay us X amount and we're going to give you a, put you on a bus for three days and take you and show you houses or in our case show you land. I mean, it's the most boring subject or you know visual out there is land. So, you know, you don't, you don't have that. You, you actually have the opportunity to learn and there's nothing really held back. I mean, what, what you get is you get unfettered access to, to you, uh, to me, to whoever. And, you know, it, it's really, I mean, there's not necessarily something that's held back. It's, it's all shared. It's, your questions are answered. And you know what, if you, if you still feel the need for help and coaching, well, then the opportunity is there. Uh, to discuss it, but it's not, it's not a sales pitch and it's not a, uh, you know, we're going to put you in this room and hammer you until you beg for mercy. Yeah. I, I always joke. I'm like, okay, now, now you know, meet our sales group in the back of the room. And like, ah, there isn't one. And like everybody like relaxes like, Oh, Oh, good. That's, that's, that's delightful. Um, Scott, how many, how many uh, boot camps have you been to? Uh, I've added it up and, uh, According to my math, I've been to nine, nine. Uh, all of them in 2015, all of them in 2016, 2017 so far, all of them, the one. And what's been your level of growth since starting? Well, in my very first boot camp, um, I was sitting in a room at the Scottsdale Resort. I don't remember the name of it. And, uh, yeah, Scott, so conference center, I remember. I remember you coming I, up to me in a break and be like, Mark, check this out. And you showed yeah. me word swag. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's genius. Yeah, so I, I show up there. I had done uh, five deals. And basically where I was is I was, I think I had one property left and I was literally like almost out of cash. Okay, because I had sold everything on terms and um, I kind of had, I had, one mission that I was on a, on a path to go understand. And that is how do I get cash sales or how do I get more cash? And I remember I walked up to you and I'm like, okay, so I'm out of cash. Now what? And you're like, yeah, well, uh, you could go find somebody to go, uh, buy the note from you, or you could, uh, bring in a partner or you could just sell for cash. And I'm like, okay, well, how do I sell for cash? He's, and, and basically you were like, uh, well, it will just come to you. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, okay, well, that's a bunch of garbage. It'll just come to me. And then, uh, I kid you not, man, I, I left out of there with, uh, with this vision that I was going to go on the eBay and sell a, the last remaining property I had for cash and left out of there. And like within a week sold that one for cash and I was back in the game. So then I understood like, Hey, you can take some of these and sell them liquid, it would almost be like a liquidation strategy, liquidate it for cash. And guess what you, you get, you still make, you, I doubled my money on that one. And then after that, it's like money has not been, um, has not been an issue ever since then. So that was the first thing that I, I came across. And it was the first advice that I had that was able to allow me to scale 
to where to this day, cash has not been, been an issue. It just shows up when you need it. It's, it's the weirdest thing. I, I remember saying, I'm like, am I really saying this to him? Yeah. But it's true. But it's true. Yeah. It's true. Tate, do you have the same experience? Yeah. I mean, the cat, are you referring to just cash deals? Yeah. Just cash deals. Like Mark, I mean, you know, like we need cash. Like it's the craziest thing. It's the craziest thing. It's, it's the same thing as what Scott said. It's just like one day we might be running low and then you decide to shift your focus from terms to cash. And, you know, over the weekend, it was kind of one of those shifts where it was like, let's blow this stuff out. Let's just, you know, recover our investment and move on to the next stuff. And, uh, you know, we made 400% in cash flips. So since then it's, you know, you do it long enough, the business starts to sustain itself. And then you get to, you know, Scott's level where everything's running smoothly, but at first you kind of got to take that leap of faith. And it's weird to say it will just come, it just happens because people ask, well, what else do I need to do? It's like, well, just stick with the basics, can you keep marketing it, you know, make sure it's everywhere on the internet. So buyers know it's for sale. I don't know. It's the craziest thing. Yeah. Eric Peterson, if you're going to start over again, is there anything you would have done differently? Like what, what, what kind of newbie advice would you kind of give somebody listening to this? Um, well, you know, I started, I bought land in Tennessee. Um, it wasn't, I won't say it's, it, it was a mistake, but I think that if I bought land elsewhere, uh, maybe out West in Arizona, Nevada, Colorado, somewhere over there, I might've, you know, moved a little bit quicker, um, potentially, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, I guess that's the one thing that immediately comes to mind is kind of, you know, stay out West. Yeah. Rachel Mueller, any, any regrets when you first started? Um, I don't think we were asking for high enough down payments right away. We had started investing in some more expensive properties because they were, I mean, great deals and we knew we were going to sell them, but it took us a little bit longer to get that initial investment back. Um, and so we've learned from that moving forward. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a mindset shift actually, sure. because like John Liu, uh, like last week got eight grand for a down payment. He paid 7,500 for the property and he's making like 24 grand on the deal. And you know, like, I don't know about you, Scott, like, are you asking for eight grand down? Well, we, we don't, what we do is, um, look, I, I try to be within the market, right? Like I try to find out, um, what the market will bear. And typically the formula that we use is I look at how much money I have invested in the property and I try to recover uh, 20% of that right away. So if we had, you know, a thousand dollars invested in land, I would try to re I would try to recoup on my down payment, $200. And then the monthly payments from there would, would then be 10, um, $10 a month for each of the remaining, you know, hundred dollars of, of uh, principal of equity that I have into that deal or, or cash into that deal. So essentially if I follow that formula, I'll get my money back on the, uh, within 10 months. Now that said, the other way of looking at this is, um, when they call in, when the customers call in and they, 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 we ask them like, do you want to do terms or cash? We will say to them, okay, great. How much were you looking to put down? And what they will say is, Oh, well, I thought I could do it for $200. Oh, well, you can, but the, uh, the payoff is going to take longer. You know, what, what I'd like to do is, or your, your monthly payment amount will be higher. What I'd like to do is try to get you the lowest monthly payment possible. So what amount are you able to put down? And by asking the question or framing it in that way, what happens is uh, all of a sudden they shift and they're like, well, I could do 300 down. I could do 800 down. I could do 8,000 down. So your, your, uh, your positions become crazy in terms of, you know, you, you'll make, you're making money on the down payment when you do something like that. And then it's an easy way of, if, of getting them back up. So you're getting a higher cash flow, your, your return is infinite and you're not even hard selling them. You're just kind of letting them talk, talk themselves into it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember at boot camp when you gave that tip, I was like writing it down. I'm like, son of a gun. <laughs> I love boot camp. Like I learn like just that one, you know, tip alone expands your mind, expands the possibilities. And we started getting higher downs. Um, David, what about you? Any, any, uh, newbie regrets when you first started? Yeah. Let me just say like that tip that Scott gave, you can imagine like seven more of those tips at boot camp. Okay. So let me just frame it that way. Uh, and then my own newbie advice would be 
to leave all creativity at the door, treat this like a formula and do it exactly as Mark has laid it out. Um, that was my mistake. I try to be different. I try to do some central California stuff from the get go. Big dud there. So rural vacant land, just keep it simple. Follow the system. Let creativity come in a year later. That's my tip. I love it. Mike Zena, what about you? Yeah, I'm going to echo what Dave said because I think in the beginning, I tried to kind of reinvent the wheel. I figured, hey, I'm going to draft up this pretty crazy uh, awful letter. It's going to be really blow everybody away. And they're going to, but the awful letter and the toolkit, it's all you need. I mean, you, there's a formula. Like we always say, it's a blueprint. This is a blueprint for success. So follow it. Don't try to insert your own uh, kind of new ideas before you even understand the process. Of course, there's always room for uh, your own creativity at a certain level. But in the beginning, you need to get the bread and butter, the mailing, the marketing. You need to follow it. And in the beginning, without guidance, before we had guidance, before we met, you know, everybody here at the Land Geek, it was just kind of, oh, I'm going to do it this way. I think this is better. Let me be creative. And Creativity is good, but only after you've learned the system and, and applied the sound principles that are, that are part of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Eric Peterson, when he first started, um, what, what's your full-time job? Graphic design. Graphic design. So you're kind of a creative guy, but yeah. were you skeptical? Like, how can these guys be talking about 300 to 1,000% returns with raw land? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's always a little bit of skepticism until you, you know, can duplicate it yourself. So, I mean, yeah, I, I definitely had some, but I was willing to, to give it a try and see if I could accomplish it. You know, I mean, it's hard to imagine that, that you can go out there and you can buy land for maybe a couple hundred bucks for an acre or something. But if you, start mailing the right areas and reach the right people. I mean, you're going to do it and then turn around and sell it for three, 400% more. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Rachel? You and Sean are pretty analytical. <laughs> Maybe Sean more than me for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, Sean actually, he was a mechanical engineer um, before switching to this full time. So yeah, definitely on the analytical side. Um, and the, Proof is with all of us and then some. I mean, we show that it can be done. So, yeah, I think it's really cool when, like, you know, Tom Willis and um, Derek Marshall and all, the, all these people are, are actually closing deals in real time at boot camp. And it makes it feel so real for the people who are, who are so new. And, uh, and, you know, that part's really, really cool. Um, Tate, what about you? Like, when you first started, was, were there any, thing you know that you'd go back and be like oh i should have done this differently oh for sure like looking back on it uh i stress this a lot in coaching that you know your county selection is so crucial in this business i mean everybody wants to start and they want to find that that el dorado county and i've been informed that there is an el dorado county and it's in california somewhere but you know there's that that idea that oh because mark and scott and everybody else are buying and selling land in one area it's all purchased and there's not, there's no meat left on the bone there. And so people go out and they try to find these new areas that are untouched. And the truth is that the reason they're untouched is maybe they don't fit with our business model or maybe property doesn't fly off the shelf there. So, you know, my advice is always, you know, stick with the basics imitation, you know, go ahead and do what the other people are doing. Cause if they're making money there, I know I can make money there as well. Um, I look back at that and I think, man, I wasted a lot of time researching areas that, you know, that didn't even work with our business model. So uh, that's one of the biggest things that I wasted a lot of time in when I was starting off. And then yeah. I mean, another thing was like, you know, my, the way I deployed capital at first, it was just crazy. And at boot camp, I always share the story about how you know, I was in this honey hole of an area and I was able to buy these properties for, for pennies on the dollar and sell them on uh, for terms for, you know, five, 600% all day long, really, really quick. As soon as I could get them, they were gone. But I eventually uh, started leaning towards the, the terms deals and terms deals were great. And I was selling them on terms, but I wasn't recovering my initial investment fast enough to keep growing. And so I started 
you know, basically liquidating some of these properties. And so I, uh, I ruined an area, so to speak, because I, I let all the property go at a really reduced rate and it drove the market value down. And so, you know, stuff like that, that you learn from. And had I had a mentor at that time, I know that I wouldn't have made that mistake. Don't feel badly. I've, I've ruined several areas from 2001 to 2003. <laughs> Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I still get angry emails. Uh, I, mean, I know. Full, full subdivisions I ruined. Yeah, no just now starting to recover because your name is just a distant memory at this point. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So let's go around uh, the round table here of, of land geeks and uh, put everybody on the spot. Be fun. Give your tip of the week. David Benalis, what do you got? I would say go to digitalmarketer.com. Uh, check out their website. It's really the, the best way to stay on the cutting edge of social media marketing. Check it out. It's a wealth of knowledge there. You've got social media on your mind. You just got back from uh, social, was it social media ex, ex, uh, world or? The social media marketing world. I mean, could they make it any harder pr to pronounce? <laughs> <laughs> what, what was your biggest takeaway there? Wow. Okay. Um, taking care of your customers after the sale. So we focus so much on marketing, marketing, closing sale, get your money. And then it's like, we forget about them. So there is a keynote speaker there. Um, Joey Coleman, you can YouTube him. Joey Coleman, 100 days, well worth an hour of your time. And right after you listen to this podcast, um, Taking care of your customers after the fact will create lifelong customers and advocates for your company. I love it. I love it. Rachel Mueller, tip of the week. Uh, my tip of the week is going to be a book, uh, Getting Things Done by David Allen. If you haven't read it already, I mean, I think it's definitely worth it. It really helps change your mindset about staying organized. Um, the busier you get in this business, it just becomes overwhelming and impossible to keep everything in your head. And list making and staying organized is going to be the only way to stay on top of that. I feel like I stole Scott Todd's. He's smiling down there. <laughs> okay. Scott, what are you thinking about? Do you do, do you do the GTD method, Scott? No. No. Do, <laughs> do you have a strong opinion about the GTD method? I bought the book and I literally just got a few things out of it and like, no, I'm not going to do this. It's it definitely a harder read for sure. But I think if you can take away a few things from it, it really is beneficial. Yeah. Mike Zen Master Zeno. <laughs> it's just a calming effect. Whenever Mike, whenever Mike starts talking, I, I feel like my, my heart rate goes down like 10 beats <laughs> for sure. David, I was like, yeah, that me too. Uh, my tip, I guess I was going to go with one, but I'll go with this honesty. And what I mean by that is don't be afraid. When I was in the be beginning stages of doing land vesting and I'm buying land from people, I would be, apprehensive, a little nervous, or what are you going to do with this land? Or, or what, you know, and you kind of feel like, oh, geez, I'm, I'm going to, I don't know if I should tell them. And I have found by and far that if you are honest with people on both the selling, I mean, the buying and the selling side, you'll have more deals and it'll be easier for you and it'll go smoothly. I mean, I tell people straight up when I'm working on, on a negotiation for a price, well, let me just break it down what I'm going to do with this land. You know, I tell them straight out, you know, that I have to buy within very tight margins because I either sell to another investor or I'm going to sell on terms and get my money over a very long period of time. So I have to keep my margins very tight. And I just want to let you understand that. I know I'm not trying to ask you to compromise, but uh, this is where I'm at. And people just get taken back by that. I think there's so much... Mark and I, you've talked about that so much of people taking advantage of other people in real estate. When someone comes across with a breath of fresh air and honestly tells them the truth, uh, it, come, it just changes everything. It's a game changer. And I think that that's one thing about this entire <coughs> excuse me, business and organization is that, yeah, we love to make money, right? We love making money, but we do it honestly and ethically, and, and there's room for that. So don't be afraid of it. Embrace it. I love it. I love it. Um, Tate Litchfield, tip of the week. Tip of the week. Um, you know, I've been thinking a lot about this and I've been thinking about what's making my life easier right now. And right now it's an app that we've talked about in the past, but it's called Shipwright. And I know Mark, you love this app too. No, no, it's not, it's not Shipwright. That's the, that's the company I use. Oh, okay. 
Uh, it's the app is uh, What's smart it called? service alert. Smart scan. Smart scan. Yeah, smart scan. So it's a it, the service is called Shipwright, but the app's called uh, Smart Scan, and basically you have all your mail delivered to you know your 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 mailbox, and these guys at the at the mailbox service will go ahead and scan it for you. You get a a notification on your phone saying you've got mail. Basically, you can go through and look at the the mail without even having to go to the mailbox and open it. Yeah, it's it's amazing. And so the beauty of it is when you get all those return to sender um, letters, rather than have them fill up your home mailbox, they go to this uh, this you know your PO box. The can the mail service opens them or scans you what the outside of the envelope looks like and lets you know it got returned to sender. I take that information, I port it over to my VA and he goes through into LG Pass and he updates mailing addresses. And that's something that's been making my life a whole lot easier. We don't have to leave the house anymore. It makes me even more of a hermit. And, you know, now I don't have to get out of my PJs at all in the daytime because my whole business is run from, a, you know, my office. And it's, I don't know, for me, it's one of those things that's, it's just making my life better. It's awesome. It's awesome. Tate and his wife are due in July. So you know it's it, it'll be nice to be in your pajamas doing deals holding yeah. holding the baby changing diapers you know uh, i've already done deals all over the world mark it's time to do them with uh with a kid in the hands right absolutely absolutely uh eric peterson your tip of the week yeah so um i've been kind of looking at some ideas here for marketing with video recently and uh i came across this website animoto.com a-n-i-m-o-t-o i love them and uh yeah it's just kind of like a little tool to put together marketing videos you can add text over the top and there's kind of some templates and kind of a little bit of a storyboarding system and um I don't know. Um, just kind of looking at it and seeing if it'll make sense. Eric, can I, can I give you? A, can I give you a great tip? Sure. It's only for Eric. So everybody else, just ignore this. It's Lumen L U M E N five dot com, and what it will do is it'll take your blog post and create and automate making a video for you. Automate. All right. I it's automates my favorite word. For sure. Second favorite word's free. Check that out. Um, Great tip, though. We love Animoto. Tate's like, oh, Animoto. David Banalis is like, you like Animoto, David? <laughs> yeah, he likes it. I love anything that has video in it. Anything that has video in it. All right. Well, here's a video expert, Scott Todd. Scott, what's your tip of the week? You're, it's, it's, I keep hitting you up for all these tips, Scott. Like, and one day, you're going to be like, pass. Like, yeah. Like, I should even ask you for a tip. Every Tuesday, man, I get hammered for tips. It takes it takes a whole army to come up with all these tips for me. All right, Mark. And then when I deliver them, watch you guys. Watch what happens here. Watch what Mark does. All right, Mark. Here's my tip. It is. I'm gonna put it in the chat too. It is pasteapp.me. Paste Check it out. App.me. Pasteapp.me. Yep. Yep. App.me. Yeah. Got it. I got All right. It. So, so what it does is uh, it allows you to, on a Mac, to copy something and then it stores it and then you can copy more stuff and stores it and then you can go back and paste and paste and paste and paste. So you don't have to keep going over and then back again. If you're just going to ke- catch multiple things on the same screen, there you go. You know, it's so funny. I, I, I think I have this and I don't even use it. <laughs> I, I use I use a little free thing called Jump Cut. Have you seen Jump Cut? Now it only uh, does twenty five your top twenty five, but it's so easy, and I'm so no, used I, to doing it. It's like one of those. It's like this is a really good example of like how I'm how I'm aging myself, right? Like I'm just like set my ways, and I'm I'm like oh another paste, see another copy and paste app. See what what he'll normally do is he'll say like. Well, why don't you like jump cut? I'll be like, I don't know anything about jump cut. Well, why is this better than jump cut? I don't know about jump cut. And you've never given me jump cut as a tip of the day, Mark, because you hoard, hoard it all. I disagree. <laughs> I disagree with that 100%. I could not be more 
generous with my tips. The, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, what it is, is I cheat and I don't give any real tips because I always tell the guests <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. their tip. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, then, but then I'm like, Mark, you got to stop. You got to start, stop eating me up, man. You got, yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe I'll give you the tip. Yeah, their website is the tip of the week. No, it's okay, Mark. You can have it. I'll make, I'll make your life easy. Okay, fine. All right. Check out Jump Cut. <laughs> no, it's no. free. It does the same thing. Look, look, I'm looking at it right now. It doesn't even, first of all, it doesn't even have a real website. It's jumpcut.sourceforge.net. You can't even find the stupid thing. It looks like something that uh, was like, you know, back, back in a DOS mode program versus something that's fancy. You know what? Check it out. works. It works. Check. $9, Mark. $9. Yeah, that's lunch today for me. Oh, please. <laughs> I, got a, I, got a new, I got a new lunch place out here, Scott, when you're out here. Called oh, really? Poke Bowl. You'll love it. Is that a fish? It's yeah, it's like sushi on steroids. It's like super oh, healthy. You lost me at sushi. Really? <laughs> Scott, come on. Scott, we have got it. Come on, man. Come on. I think as a group we need to really open up Scott Todd's gas. Come on. Come on. It's my mission. It's my mission. It's, so that's yeah. sushi and Indian food now? <laughs> I, I, honestly, I think oh. everybody should go to come to the boot camp in Vegas just to say to Scott, have you ever had Thai food? Have you ever had you know, like something with like flavor. Scott's <laughs> like, oh, if that's not steak potatoes, I'm not going to eat it. If it's not a Panera sandwich, I don't need it. Oh, man. <laughs> I got a new no, place for us. I feel, I, don't, I feel no love here. Feel no first, love. first, <laughs> for, look, there's nothing wrong with going to first watch in Panera Bread for, the, for your whole life. I just think that your, your world's small and we can expand it. And I think that as a community, a land geek community, we can help you do that. Mark, Mark, Mark. Who in Orlando, who took you to like three incredible restaurants? Mike I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a, trifle, I'm a trifle deaf in my left ear. He just dropped the mic. Okay. <laughs> Scott Todd did. It was great. I'll give him that. Three of them. Fine. And I even said to Mark, I'm like, Mark, next Orlando boot camp, we could go to this. And Mark's like, no, no, no. I like the places that we went to. Okay. Sounds good to me. Yeah. If you good, like though. Panera bread. I'll give it to you. All right. My tip of the week is actually go to the landgeek.com forward slash bootcamp and learn about bootcamp. You know, oh, Scott's like, <laughs> don't give that tip. That's not a good tip. That's like an easy one. Ma. It's not an easy one. If you're not, if you're listening to this, you don't like, well, how do I learn more about bootcamp? It's a good tip. I should have given that one. You should have given that one. I could have given paste or jump cut and saved everybody 10 bucks, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good listen i want to thank all the listeners do us a favor if you like this round table shoot us an email and say subject line like round table we're going to send you for free the 97 dollars passive income launch kit um if we get you know 10 or more um that's even better and if you're if you have questions about the toolkit or flight school or coaching just go to uh the landgeek.com forward slash training book a call Talk to David. Talk to Mike. Either one of those guys, I promise you, they're very, they're very soothing. Like instead of meditating now, I'm just going to call those guys and like just listen to them talk. It's just very soothing, very nice conversation. And the nice thing about it is, is they really will tell you the straight, <laughs> the straight stuff, right? Um, just their, their, the core value of it is what's best for you. And um, it's, it's really nice. And it, it'll definitely be a a fun conversation. So check that out too. Um, are we good? Mark, you ready? One, One two, two. Now you guys all know three. what's coming, so you better do it, right? Okay, <laughs> right, right. The, like the a whole group round table. You guys know, right? One, I don't know. Two. Rachel doesn't even listen to her own, pod, her own oh podcast. Oh my gosh. Then you'll be excluded, but everybody else <laughs> knows. Ready? One, <laughs> One two, two, three. Let Freedom ring. ring. That was terrible. That's Horrible. terrible. Horrible. <laughs> Rachel's like Rachel's like that's why I don't listen to the podcast. I'm I'm glad I didn't join in on that. Oh my gosh, uh, you're out. All right. <laughs> well, well, hopefully we can do this again next week and everybody can join. Um, Eric Peterson, I want to thank you uh, for taking time out. Rachel Mueller, David Banalis, Mike. Zen Master Zeno, Tate Litchfield, and Scott Todd. Thanks, everybody. Great panel. I thought this was a great discussion. And um, hopefully we'll see everybody next week. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.